Okay, uh, just something I'm doing today, uh, this is now, what date is this, as far as time is concerned, which is very important in the business world, Wednesday, 24th, February, 2016, it has now been confirmed that hi C is bringing Ecto Cooler back to shelves. Um, I can't begin to ex express my absolute just joy, you know, it's something that doesn't even register yet mentally, it's like, it's still going, to, it's a dream, you know, uh, what can you say about it except that back during, long time ago, I mean, um, when I was watching Extreme Ghostbusters, back when GB.net was still active, when Chad was still on GB.net, back when we had, you know, all kinds of complicated methods to find original Ghostbusters episodes, this could be big. You know, the reemergence of Ecto Cooler is going to be huge. Every kid, every person, grown and young, is going to buy this stuff. Save it. Pack it away. Create cocktails, whatever they want. And it's going to be very fattening. But, who cares? Anyway, the thing about it is that um, this could lead to a new cartoon. This could lead to a new reemergence of real Ghostbusters. It could actually make more episodes. I don't know. You know? Get the whole gang back there. No, you know? David Coulier is still around. Maurice LaMarche is still around. Uh, Arsene Hall is still around. Buster is... I think that guy is dead, actually. So, Arsene will outlive the guy who took over. Winston. I'm just saying that if they really wanted to go down to Frank Welker, you know, they are still here. They're still very active as voice actors because the voice is not the body. The voice is going to go on for a longer time than, the, you know, the physical appearance will. So there's still a lot they can do. And if they really wanted to remake or bring back a real Ghostbusters cartoon, Go for it, you know, in my opinion. We got Ecto Cooler back. This new Ghostbusters movie, it's probably going to be crap. But, at least, this is happening. They're actually, they're making all the retro stuff. This is what I was hoping for. They're actually doing it. They're making all the retro toys. Because, they're saying, okay, yeah, you, you got your new stuff. You got your new Ghostbusters toys. Enjoy it. But, we're going to have a side toy line for the original Ghostbusters movie. So this is sort of an excuse to actually bring back the original Ghostbusters toy line. And they're going to have new toys for the old Ghostbusters movie. Because this movie is going to be sold in a big box pack with the original two Ghostbusters movies. When it comes to DVD and Blu-ray or whatever. We don't have DVD anymore. But whatever. They're going to sell them in a pack. And that means that they're not just going to capitalize on the new Ghostbusters remake. They're going to make new everything that has anything to do with Ghostbusters brand name. And they're going to sell it. And it's going to be a massive reemergence, a renaissance for Ghostbusters that's going to come along with this, this whatever the hell film they're going to make. And I'm excited to see what they come up with, man. Um, they got the Twinkies, man. Whatever that is. Ecto Cooler Twinkies. They're coming out with some crazy stuff. So, this is great. This is like actually going somewhere, you know. This movie is actually going to benefit the fan base. Versus my initial reaction to it, which is that it's just going to be this really, you know, thing that nobody needed or wanted. But I don't know, man. It's 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 benefiting us because Ecto Cooler was such a lost art. It was just no one is ever going to see it again, kind of thing. It was just you know extinct. It's basically the same thing as this little dodo. We, everybody was just hoping that we'd get it, but... And everybody was making recipes. This is going to blow things up, man. Uh, actually, Somebody actually posted a video of them squeezing out the juice. It's real. They are bringing it back. I haven't tasted Ecto Cooler since 1990-something. It's freaking... When I was, like, at least 11, 12 or something. I haven't had Ecto Cooler in a... I'm 29 now, so it's been like 17 goddamn years, 18 years, nearly two decades I've lived without Ecto Cooler, 
and they're gonna bring it back now. So, you know, that's awesome. The great thing about today's generation of kids is that they're getting a lot of cool stuff because it, you know, I think the older generation, my generation, my generation is actually trying to bring back what we liked. And so the new kids are going to get it. And they're going to get a new Power Rangers movie. I love Power Rangers. Now they're going to make a new movie. Hopefully a much better one than the original. And that's going to really kick off. I mean, uh, I really hope that the original cast has cameos in the movie. Not just Jason David Frank. You know, him coming back. Yeah, whatever. But to see the rest of them actually rejoin. I'd love to see Austin St. John. Uh, you know, he's still active in the, in the cons and everything. That's the thing. I, you know, when you read the trivia online about him, it, he basically says, oh, he's, 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 he's off doing his, his, his freaking, you know, uh, EMT work. He's not having nothing to do with no power ends no more. But no, he's still cool with it. You know, he, he's very much like, I don't know what he thinks about, you know, his time on the series, but he's not like, it's, you know, he doesn't look down on it apparently he's like you know he'll definitely be a part of the power rangers worlds to this day and that's impressive you know i can understand like yost and yost stayed on a series so long you know he he, he can tell you everything there is to know you know what i mean like as far as walter is concerned he, he went on a series for one season one or two seasons and left and didn't get into the movie, which was just sacrilegious. If you ever grew up with Power Rangers and you got to see the movie, you feel like betrayed because the Black Power Rangers isn't actually black anymore, and they changed out everything. Because, yeah, the original Power Rangers were family. You know, you can't you can't deny that they were family. You got up every Saturday and you were with your homeboys every Saturday. The Power Rangers crew, they were a family. To suddenly watch the movie and you got the re you got you got Jason you got Kimberly, you got Billy. If Billy didn't do the movie, that would have been horrible. That's the one thing that really saved the film. That actually you could sit there and say, okay, it's it's really seriously a Power Rangers movie because Billy's in it. If Billy wasn't in it, it would have been wow, no way, not a Power Rangers movie. I don't care if they get JDF. I don't care if they have Kimberly. Billy embodies the Power Rangers. He is the Power Ranger, the best one. So the great thing about the original Power Rangers movie for me was that Billy, and he was cool in that movie, you know. David Yost really should have gotten more acting roles in film because he was actually the one of the only people in that movie who was good as an actor, you know. He felt for his, his character, his performance in the movie. He actually brought it, you know what I mean? He brought he brought it in that movie, you know, versus everybody else was just like, eh, whatever, make a billion dollars, we don't care. But he was like serious. He always he was always he was always, he was always the most serious Power Ranger. He never he never half assed it. He always took it straight up, you know, like he was like real. You know, everybody else is like, This is a silly show, but Billy, that's beautiful for me because this is about creating an uh, a fantasy world for children, you know what I mean? And the only way to create that is to actually play it straight. If you just go in tongue in cheek and you're like, I don't care, and you you know you're not selling it to the to the to the kids at all, and it's not going to work. You got to actually say what say whatever you want about acting and film and all that. The the curtains have been you know there's no illusion anymore. Film is film now. We basically have behind the scenes footage every day of what they're filming. There's no illusion. It's very difficult to create an illusion where you're actually watching a movie and you're feeling like you're watching something real. It's very because you know what it takes now. Versus when you're a kid, you don't have no idea how they made it. But now, like you know that this is a set, they built it, all this stuff. And especially nowadays with CGI, that's the most worst thing. Is that that completely destroys the illusion of a film. You know when you can clearly see that this was made in a computer. And, you know, Transformers, uh, Star Wars prequels. At least in the original Star Wars movies, they didn't have CGI, so they wouldn't, couldn't, and just never had the option to create unrealistic-looking shit. It just had to look decent enough. And, of course, most of it was done on sets with real 
props, real characters. The new prequels with the fake sets, the fake everything, everything is a cartoon. It completely kills the illusion. And I liked when Star Wars was like really gritty and deep and realistic. That really is the better way to do it. You know, one thing that you, that's hard for me to watch the prequels. You know, even back when I watched Phantom Menace. It was hard to stomach that movie because one minute you're watching and you're trying to get into the story, and next thing you know, Jar Jar's jumping around, and then of course there's there's cartoons everywhere. So the movie's not really a, a live action movie; it's a, it's a cartoon more or less. So yeah, Force Awakens is superior to the entire prequel trilogy for one reason, one reason alone. They showed restraint. They actually just said, okay, we're not gonna have too much CGI all over the damn place in this shit, and you know. That's the way, you know, I'm surprised by that because I've been watching movies, every movie that's come out has been so overly done with CGI. To see a Star Wars film where there's no explosive amount of CGI, every friggin' last frame of it is impressive. That's the most greatest thing about it. I can't look down on the fact that they decided to take the movie and just play it more traditionally as if it was the next episode after Return of the Jedi. Where there was no abundance of godly amount of CGI. So that's pretty good. Um, they should definitely continue that with the next movie. No CGI if you can get away with it. They were all practical. If you need CGI, go for it. But if it can be done with a puppet, if it can be done on set with practical effects, do it with sets and practical effects. So overall, Extra Cooler is back, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a long journey. It's been a long hectic war it's been a war to return ecto core it's not something that was very nice and easy to do it was a lot of a lot of petitioning a lot of you know heartache a lot of people running to the coca people and saying gotta bring it back and now there's a goddamn excuse to bring it back so a movie is not a joke a movie is something that costs millions of dollars a lot of people involved a lot of money being thrown around high profile stuff so there's really like no better time to reemerge ecto cooler you know in in the, in on the cusp of the new this horizon that we're on this 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 frontier of the new ghostbusters series this could be a long term thing this could lead to a cartoon of course we've been down this road before ecto you know extreme ghostbusters was what it was yeah, they took it or left it. I'd prefer to leave it. I don't really, you know, it's not going to work. It's never going to work to have the Ghostbusters simply not be the original Ghostbusters crew. To pass it on to a new crew, maybe. But it's not going to be the same. And, of course, the Extreme Ghostbusters was exactly what happened when you do that. You take away the original Ghostbusters from it, and then it's just these new people, and... You're only hoping in your head that the original Ghostbusters show up at some point because they work. The original crew was fine. Why did you need to, you know, it's like the Ninja Turtles. Could you imagine doing Ninja Turtles next generation? They never changed the Ninja Turtles out. They can't because the original Ninja Turtles and their personalities are like in sync. They, they, they work. So to suddenly take Ninja Turtles and say, okay, let's do the Ninja Turtles 2 with like a girl and a Fat Ninja Turtles, something, you know, very diversity Ninja Turtles. Yeah, people might like it, but it's going to be essentially Street Sharks or Battletoads. It's not going to be Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles is, is, is iconic. Ghostbusters is, is iconic. Suddenly take Ghostbusters and just rename everybody and change your gender. That's going to like not work, you know. It, you know, it's, it's just like, there's no brainer to me. So... I know they probably hoped to to just you know get away with it, and sadly the original cast is gonna show up in the movie, so they could have just asked the original cast to hang out, actually put on proton packs and run around and do Ghostbusters three. We have a Star Wars movie where Harrison Ford, age of seventy something, is running around with a gun and shooting stormtroopers, and you're telling me there's an excuse. For Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson and Bill Murray to not do what actually is going on in society, this world right now, where actually old 60-year-old, 70-year-old men in high-level, you know, technical positions 
in the in the in the in the, in the world of, of of physics are going out and 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 doing very high level technical things. You telling me that can't possibly take place? The original Ghostbusters was about them being old and fat and not suited for the job that they decided to do. Now the joke would be even more like pertinent. It would make more sense. They're old, they're fat, and they're definitely not suited for the job that they're going to do. But they still do it anyway, and that shows that they're the Ghostbusters. They're so tough, you know. That would have been fun. But Bill Maher's a lazy son of a bitch. I don't know. He don't want to do it. He, want, he don't want to go around. He knows what it takes to make a Ghostbusters movie. I don't think he wants to go through that again, especially at his age now. You know, I think he's kind of amused by the idea of Ghostbusters with tits. You know, that kind of that's kind of fun for him. He's like, hmm, what would it be like to see some titties while I'm watching Ghostbusters? Yeah. So now we're gonna see Ghostbusters with tits. I can see that. That'd be in a, that'd be in some sort of like sly reason to make this movie. What would Ghostbusters be like with tits? And that is an interesting thing. I do want to see them titties. They're not gonna show the titties. They should show the titties. They, you know, it's Ghostbusters, but you know, it wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt to to display the goods while you're doing the thing. But we all know it, it, what's the name of Rocking some nice ones there. Uh, you know, I don't know what name. Uh, whatever her name is, uh, Rashida Jones. She got some body right there. She got a body. Um, what's the other chick? A little blonde chick. She look good. She looks freaking good. So, there's probably going to be a few scenes of titties. They got to do that. Ultimately, yeah, you don't have no female movie where they're not going to be showing off booty and titties. And, they, you know, these are some really attractive little women. They, they can't possibly go two-hour film and not have a, a, some sort of bikini scene. It's not going to happen. So, we will probably see some titty scene at some point. I hope for a full, full-on, like naked almost naked but you know like they, she gets sl her, sl her clothes get all messed up and she takes her shirt off and she goes running around with her titties jiggling with the proton pack on then I, I enjoy the movie a lot a lot more a lot more I, yeah alright Actor Cool is back can you believe it I don't believe it I think I'm in a dream right now I'm gonna be having Actor Cool at some point it's in the next couple of months or so <laughs> I can't believe it.